Hare Krishna. So welcome to the last chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Finally, we are reaching the finish line, 18th chapter. And uh, today is Raman and Prabhu's birthday, as I understand. So wish you a very, very happy Krishna conscious devotional birthday, Prabhuji. Dhanyavad. Shukriya. Thank you for being such a sincere student of Bhagavad Gita, of Lord Krishna and Srila Prabhupada. Happy birthday, Ramanan. Gracias. At, at that age, I, I pray that even I can absorb myself in Bhagavad Gita like you are doing. It is... Uh, Happy birthday, Mr. Ramanan. It is very, very uh, inspiring for me. Namaskar. All right. Let's get started. So, uh, let us recite the Mangalacharan prayers. Thank you so much. Mm, I'll share my screen and then we will start. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swa Padantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yutahapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam, Savadhutam, Parijana, Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha, Krishna Padan, Sahagana, Lalita, Shri Vishakhan, Vitamscha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashthaya, Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Gauravani, Pracharine, Nirvishesha, Shunyavadi, Paschatya Deshatarine, E Krishna Karuna Sindho Dinabandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Okay So we will start with 18th chapter uh, Let me share my screen and we will do our whiteboarding as usual. Okay. All right. Hmm. What happened? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So Bhagavad Gita chapter 18. So very, very uh, important chapter. And this is the longest chapter in Bhagavad Gita. So it has 78 verses. The second longest was chapter 2, which had 72 verses. So that makes this the longest chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And just to give a quick summary of this chapter, um, so please pay very careful attention on the significance or summary of this chapter. This is very important to understand why this question is being asked by Arjuna. Arjuna asks a question in the 18th chapter beginning. So uh, first I wanted to point out that Srila Prabhupada says in the purport of 18.1, that Bhagavad Gita should have ended at chapter 17. Um, Arjun asks a question at the beginning of chapter 18, which 
Lord Krishna answers uh, for almost uh, two thirds of the chapter. So, what is Arjuna's question? So, let us read Arjuna's question and then it will make sense. And that forms the foundation of the entire chapter. Lord Krishna would have anyway repeated the second half of the chapter or the last one third of the chapter. But uh, I will explain all those details. Please, please pay very careful attention to get to understand the significance of chapter 18. Now, yeah, so there are too many things to say. I'm kind of going in my mind, uh, so many things to say, but uh, please pay very careful attention. I am going to summarize the significance of chapter 18, how this fits in, what really is being asked. Arjun asks the difference between sannyasa versus tyaga. So I can put this tyaga. Kindly keep yourself muted if you're not, uh, unless you have a question. So one can, another misconception that people have is, oh, after listening all this Bhagavad Gita, why is Arjun confused about this very basic thing about sannyas versus tyag? And wasn't this already clarified throughout the Bhagavad Gita, especially in the beginning chapters, um, uh, where uh, Lord Krishna talks about external renunciation versus internal renunciation and so on. So there is a very subtle difference and there is an aspect of the mood of Arjuna, which I will explain. So there are all these things. Many people get some doubts. Why Arjuna is asking this? What is the significance of Lord Krishna talking about this aspect again in the very end of the Bhagavad Gita and so on? So um, I'm just thinking where to start. So you must think. So let me start here. Okay. You must think of chapter 18 of Bhagavad Gita as two distinct chapters. This aspect is not true for any other chapter of Bhagavad Gita. 18th chapter can be clearly divided into two very important chapters. So we will call it 18a and 18b. Okay. 18a goes from verse number 1 to 49. 18b goes from 50 to 78. Okay. So almost this is two-thirds and this is one-thirds of the chapter, almost roughly. Okay. So uh, what is happening in 18a is that Arjuna Arjuna's question plus Lord Krishna's detailed answer. Okay, so this is an 18.1 and detailed answer we can consider 18.2 to 18.49. Okay, clear? So that is, you can say, first half of chapter 18. Now, somehow my Zoom has started raising my own hand. It was happening the other day also. So I don't know why this happens, but it happens. So don't worry if my own hand is raised in Zoom. Uh, we'll just, uh, I'm not keep going to keep lowering it. I'll try to find a way to fix that. Then there is 18B. And this is not prompted by any question from Arjuna. This is the final conclusion of Bhagavad Gita by Lord Krishna. So 18b is like the essence, the true essence, like the, the juice, the final juice of Bhagavad Gita is present in 18b. Okay. And this is considered, this 18b is considered to be the most, uh, some of the most beautiful verses, almost uh, every verse in this 18b section should be 
memorized should be internalized and understood very nicely it's a very 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 beautiful section in bhagavad gita which contains the essence okay so this section 18b we will go through slowly when we reach it 18a i will describe what is going on so with that um, description let us focus on 18a let me not get into too much into 18b right now okay so we will focus on 18a so now let us see 18.1 what is arjuna's question okay so sanyasasya mahabaho tatvam ichhami veditum tyagasya cha rishikesha prithak keshi nishudana so what is arjuna's question in 18.1 that sanyasasya mahabaho so lord krishna is being referred in three names here mahabaho rishikesha and keshi nishudana so all those names are belonging to lord krishna they have different significance we will not go into that but there are three names of lord krishna but what arjuna is saying sanyasasya mahabaho between sanyasa mahabaho tatvam ichhami veditum which means i want to know the tatva the essential difference or the difference in terms of the essence so tatva which means i will translate it as essence tatvam ichhami means i want to know veditum means to know tyagasya cha rishikesha so sanyas versus tyag okay i want to know the essence of it prithak keshi nishudana prithak means from different different angles prithak means different right so from various or different different we can say angles please explain to me this difference between sanyas and tyag okay now why is arjun asking this question so a lot of it has been already covered in the bhagavad gita but if you see bhagavad gita chapter has three sections 1 to 6 7 to 12 13 to 18 this is generally called the karma yoga section which includes gyana yoga and dhyana yoga as well this whole section in the middle is what is that who can tell bhakti yoga bhakti yoga very nice and then this section i will say till 18a i will say is what further explanation gnana yoga gnana yoga very gnana nice. yoga and i will say gnana mishra bhakti because but mainly gnana yoga but it is mixed with bhakti because every chapter after chapter 12 13th 14 15 and 19 is there 14.26 is there 15.19 is there in 16th verse the uh, shastra vidhi is there 16.23 24 17th chapter om tat sat is there uh, all these chapters even though they contain gyan there is a very strong and direct influence of bhakti but there is a very strong content of gyan as well in these chapters okay so what happens is that when one gets too much into gyan yoga then it produces gyan produces confusion so what is this gyan yoga saying what is gyan yoga saying is that uh the difference between tyag and sanyasa so arjuna is getting ready to fight or the war is going to begin he has heard all of the bhagavad gita all his other doubts have been clarified now 
really it is coming down to the moment of truth he has to make the decision whether i am going to fight or whether i am going to leave that was the uh, dilemma he had in chapter 1 he is really coming to the point of making the final decision what to do and therefore he is asking this question about sanyasa versus tyaga in the essence tell me from the all the angles various angles he needs to make a final decision whether to fight or not fight and this tyaga and sanyasa tyaga means fight i will explain how and why in just a second and sanyas means do not fight okay so sanyasa means both are by the way spiritual options okay sanyasa means everybody is a spirit soul there is no difference between fighting or not fighting one must focus on krishna and give up all the activities that is sanyasa tyaga means do the activity but as an act of krishna consciousness or dovetailing it to krishna so in both so in tyaga there is internal plus external sorry tyaga is internal renunciation only external activities continue one is internally completely renounced and focused on krishna in sanyasa there is internal plus external both renunciation okay i don't want to fight what is the point of fighting i will just go and do my krishna bhakti like a brahman or like a somebody who is you know just not worried about all these worldly actions even externally so internal renunciation is there in both but this external aspect is also not there in sanyasa so really that is the question arjun is completely fixed in krishna there is no doubt in his mind that krishna is the greatest is the supreme lord and i need to focus my mind on him now the only question is to fight or not to fight okay to my should i do my duty or should i do my so called other duty of focusing on krishna consciousness or should i also additionally fight the war basically that is the confusion or not confusion arjun wants to know from all the angles so that he can finally decide what to do and then lord krishna begins to answer this question in detail and then finally he will clarify it for arjun towards the end of the chapter in 18b as well okay so this is the sort of the essence of arjun's question and the essence of the answer of lord krishna or what he will explain in 18a all right indra mata ji kya sanyas ka matlab hai indifferent hona nahi sanyas ka matlab indifferent hona it's not about being indifferent at all sanyas means complete consciousness in spiritual knowledge that you are not you are indifferent to everything material you are completely absorbed and focused on everything spiritual when you are focused on spiritual progress it's not called indifference you are focused on what is higher priority indifferent to material things exactly indifferent to lower priorities okay thank you you are a professor you are going to mm-hmm. teach a class let us say and you are focused on that class and somebody comes and you know uh, you know whatever disturbs you then you will say don't disturb me right now i'm focused on something so it doesn't mean you are indifferent to them mm-hmm. it means that is lower priority you are focused on higher priority thank right? you so absolutely one should not take as indifference at all there is no indifference it is complete focus on something that matters so that is the essence of arjuna's question and lord krishna is going to answer it in detail so since this is a 
detailed class we will go through all the verses carefully and we will see what lord krishna is going to explain so between in 18a okay which is from verse number 1 to 49 what lord krishna will do he will take arjuna from doing your duty with detachment from result so so i'm giving you a very very brief summary of what is the section 18a all the verses that will come later are connected to this so please pay very careful attention right now this portion is extremely important if you remember this much rest of the 18a will make a lot of sense to you so do your duty point number 1 as a matter of duty point number 2 without attachment to results point number 3 i am mentioning various points without attachment to duty itself okay the time oh i am you're not attached to the fact that you need to do your duty you are not attached to the fact there is no attachment at all you are not attached to the fact that i am doing this specific duty you are not attached to the results that that action or that duty or that work will produce you are not attached to anything so without attachment completely from anything or with anything okay so yeah so these are the three factors so do your duty and point number 1 as a matter of duty just because it needs to be done without attachment to results without attachment to duty itself that is what lord krishna will recommend and he will call this as real tyag or sanyasa he will say that the word tyag or sanyas doesn't matter the definition of it matters you can call it tyag you can call it sanyas i don't care what really matters is the definition or the meaning and the meaning is this so this is the most important part let me make it into a big box big red box okay and the next 11 verses from 18.1 2 to 18.12 we'll talk about this okay so 18.2 to 18.12 11 verses are just going to explain this in little bit more detail so we will go through that explanation fair all right so what is lord krishna's explanation here aha and one more thing so that is 18a if you see oops this is 18a from 18a this is what i explained here is still not bhakti do you see any bhakti here there is no bhakti here all that is there is doing your duty without any attachment to result without any attachments to this that anything just doing your duty so this is nishkama karma yoga in other words this is not bhakti in 18b what lord will do he will connect this to bhakti and that is the essence of bhagavad gita doing your duty doing your daily activities with complete consciousness of bhagwan krishna complete absorption in bhagwan and that is bhakti all right so all the devotees of lord krishna all the greatest devotees even the gopis uh whoever are the devotees that are described in shrimad bhagavatam none of them are sanyasis they have not abandoned everything and gone to the forest ultimately they are engaged in the material world for example there is example of dhruva first he goes to the forest if you remember but after he gets darshan of lord vishnu then he comes back and becomes the king but now he becomes a king in the mood of bhakti yoga first he went to lord vishnu to search for lord vishnu not for bhakti 
but to get a kingdom bigger than his father. So it was a material desire he went with by Lord Vishnu's darshan. He became a pure devotee. And then he still came back. He did not stay in the forest. He came back and ruled the kingdom for 36,000 years as a king. So he was completely engaged in the world, but as a devotee. Okay. So all the devotees that are mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, they are all engaged one way or the other in the world, but with a mood of bhakti. So that is 18b is going to connect how one must do your duty without attachment, without material attachments. So I should add this material. Without material attachments. But still it is not bhakti. 18b will make it attachment to Krishna. And that will make it bhakti. So that is the connection between 18a and 18b. All right. Okay. So now we will go to 18.2 onwards. So I hope you have all understood Arjuna's question. Now we will see Lord Krishna's answer. So 18.2, what does Lord Krishna say? Kamyanam karmanam nyasam sanyasam kavayo viduhu sarva karma phalatyagam prahustyagam vichakshana. So, vichakshana. So, what is being said here? Lord Krishna is saying that. Basically, he is saying, again, we are talking about sannyasa versus tyaga. So, Lord, the translation is, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, by giving up of activities that are based on material desire is what great learned men called the renounced order of life, sannyasa. And giving up the results of all activities is what the wise call as renunciation or tyaga. So what is being said here is that sannyasa, Lord Krishna is saying, is equal to giving up of um, so I will introduce a word here Kamya karma. Okay. And I will explain that Tyaga is giving up results of all karma. So now, please pay attention to understand the next 10 verses. There is this thing called Kamya karma. and Nitya Karma. Kamya Karma means activities that you want to do for some Kama, for some desire of fruitive result. So activity that produces fruitive result and you want that result. and you want that fruit. Nitya karma means uh, activity that supports spiritual goals. Okay. So Kamya karma is activity that produces fruitive results. And you want those results. You want to enjoy those results. Nitya karma, there is another word for this is niyata karma. Niyata karma means it is also translated as prescribed duty. Which means your, you can think of it like your daily livelihood in the modern terms. 
for arjuna it is fighting it is his because he is a kshatriya he has to fight for all of us it is living our livelihood in whatever way you know to maintain our body family etc so activity that supports spiritual goals that is nitya karma so what are some examples of nitya karma can somebody you can shout out kirtan kirtan very nice it is activity correct yeah. it is not devoid of activity kirtan means lot of activity is there you have to you know sing loudly you have to clap your hands you have to hear there is all these things if it is kirtan that you are doing moving around then you kind of you know move around and do nagar kirtan nagar sankirtan and also on very nice Swad- what swadhyay prasadam ha huh? i heard swadhyay swadhyay very nice so we have we do swadhyay we do so many students are doing bhakti shastri you have to give test you have to memorize the verses you have to you know do homeworks right now you are listening to the class you are paying attention all this is activity but it is activity that is you are not doing swadhyay of something useless how to become rich or how to become more beautiful you are doing swadhyay for how to become krishna conscious so all this is supporting our spiritual goals some one one or two more examples cooking prasadam yes very nice cooking prasadam or cooking we call it bhoga after it is offered it becomes prasadam bhog we offer bhog lagane ja rahe hain we say bhog lagate hain bhagwan ko so bhog lagate hain aur fir prasad ban jata hai very nice japa japa is another is connected to kirtan yes it okay, is okay okay it is uh, like a personal kirtan that mm. is japa yes anything else charity 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 to devotees we can say okay book distributions yes mata ji sorry book distributions book distribution very nice devotional book distribution yes we just call it dist- book distribution because we are very used to it but it is not <laughs> distributing some uh, film hollywood bollywood magazines but devotional book distribution absolutely yes. correct so you can see all these things all these are spir- activities that's they are activities very uh, you know active uh, participation is needed by the personally by the devotee or a group of devotees and these all support either support or directly uh, um uh what should i say directly are devotional or spiritual activities okay so all these are known as nitya karma okay now kamya karma what are some examples of that looking after family uh okay so what i doing can... some job okay okay so okay very nice so two examples came up looking after let me write it down looking after family and doing job so please pay attention here all these activities that are mentioned here everything here can be kamya karma if it is not connected to krishna so if you are doing kirtan of bollywood songs you can so many people do kirtan of bollywood songs right i used to do it myself before you know when i was uh, in college some famous song whatever i don't know um so many songs are there right so you constantly keep singing those songs to the point where you know completely you have memorized them so that is kamya karma because you are getting some fruit and you are enjoying that fruit it sound it feels so good to sing those songs swadhyaya i said you know reading books that are material how to become rich how to become beautiful how to become strong how to do this how to do that just so that you can have a material result cooking can be definitely material you know you can cook all kinds of things to enjoy 
Japa, I don't know, Japa of something else. Charity, charity for the sake of pride, for the sake of acknowledgement, recognition, my name will be known, all those things. And some distributing books or whatever distributing things, again, charity for the sake of uh, pride, for the sake of recognition, oh. name, fame, all these things are Kamya Karma. So you understand the difference between Kamya Karma and Nitya Karma. Now, even simple activities like looking after family can be Nitya Karma. Nobody mentioned here looking after family in this list. But Nitya Karma looking is, includes looking after family. For those of you who are having a family, you cannot neglect your family and just say, I am just doing Krishna consciousness, I am doing Bhakti, and you go to hell. You have to look after your family so that everything is happy, your mind is peaceful, and then you can focus on Krishna. That is point number one. Point number two, looking after family means looking as a head of the family, like parents. Parents typically look after children, at least when children are young. Later on, children look after parents, so the role reverses. But whoever is looking after the other, you also look after their spiritual growth. So when there are children especially, parents should absolutely make sure not just that the child is um, fed and he's safe and healthy so that I can do my bhakti, but also to give bhakti to the child as well. That is also called looking after the family. Otherwise, you are not looking after the family in the true devotional or in the sense of bhakti. Doing your job. You, can, you must do your job because you don't want to come out on the street if you have no money so that you can maintain some basic needs of life and you can continue your spiritual goals if the other material things are taken care. So in other classes, this aspect, this Nitya Karma is known as also Gauna Vidhi or supporting activities that support our spiritual goals. Okay. And Mukhya Vidhi, that is not Kamya Karma. That is not Mukhya Vidhi. These are supporting activities. The Mukhya Vidhi is the spiritual goal itself that I want to make spiritual progress. Everything that supports spiritual progress is called Gauna Vidhi. So, uh, Nitya Karma are all the Gauna Vidhis plus Mukhya Vidhi is all Nitya Karma. Everything that only produces material results and you enjoy it materially with a material consciousness is Kamya Karma. Okay. So, what is the distinction that Lord Krishna is drawing in 18.2? In 18.2, Lord Krishna is saying sannyasa means give up kamya karma, not nitya karma. Is this the right thing to do? Now you all have studied 17 chapters of Bhagavad Gita. Please tell me, is this good or not? That one should give up Kamya Karma, but one should keep or keep doing Nitya Karma. Is this recommended by Lord Krishna? What do you think or not? No. Mataji, you have to think and answer. Who else says no? Who says yes? Yes. Yes. Because you are giving up the fruit it, you know, results that. Yeah. Fruitful. And for not giving up Nitya Karma. Because those Nitya Karma is something that is supporting your spiritual activities, your spiritual goals. Why should you give it up? So this is recommended by Lord Krishna. This is not rejected by Lord Krishna. And Tyaga. Lord Krishna says is give up the results of all activities. Kamya, if you are doing it, or Nitya, both. Give up the results, the material results of all kind of activities. Is this recommended by Lord Krishna? Yes. Yes, it is recommended by Lord Krishna. So with this understanding of sannyasa and tyaga, both are correct. 
both are correct are you following you must not do kamya karma at all and whatever nitya karma you are doing give up the material results of that and give up kamya karma altogether so that is the meaning of 18.2 and that is what we must uh, accept in 18.3 lord krishna says some other people not him and he consciously says other people give a different definition of um sanyasa and tyaga so sanyasa is give up all activities is this recommended by lord krishna give up all activity oh yes or no 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 no, no. so this is not correct and tyaga is don't give up remember f s a c food sacrifices austerity and charity karma yagya tap dhyan dana so is this correct don't give up these now these other people in this case of tyag are not talking about whether to enjoy the result or not that is not being mentioned they are saying just keep doing these uh, karma daan tap uh, yagya keep doing these is this recommended by lord krishna to keep doing it and the implicit meaning is and enjoy the material result is this recommended no no this is also not recommended and therefore lord krishna says some people describe it in this way that you must give up all activity and some people say tyaga means don't give up these activities give up everything else don't give up these activities and enjoy whatever result comes from it so the point is both are wrong so it all def- depends on the definition of tyag and sanyas how you define it and lord krishna says that the definition of 18.2 is correct that is lord krishna's choice or he is saying that is how you should understand tyag and sanyas then both those words are correct and if somebody tells you that tyag and sanyas means 18.3 definition then it is wrong and then with this understanding so you know lord krishna says let me just clarify and make it very clean and straight for you what is the meaning of tyag and sanyasa so in 18.4 lord krishna says now listen to my definite or my clear definition my clear answer so there are lord krishna says in 18.4 there are three types of tyag and tyaga or sanyasa again the word does not have much meaning unless you define it they are just words and you will see that lord krishna uses both words in the end tyaga and sanyasa but it is the definition that matters so there are three definitions lord krishna will say and he will come to that in 18.7 in just a few verses but he is going to explain these three definitions so 18.4 Lord Krishna says that oh best of the bharatas now hear my judgment about renunciation or tyaga or sanyasa oh tiger among men renunciation is declared in the scriptures to be of three kinds so there are three kinds of renunciation in 18.5 and 18.6 <coughs> lord krishna will define the correct understanding so this is lord krishna's definition of tyag sanyas whatever word you want to use no problem the definition is this so what is the definition 18.5 first lord krishna says keep doing 
FSAC. Okay. So 18.5 says, acts of sacrifice, charity, and penance are not to be given up. They must be performed. Yagya dana tapaha karma na tyajyam karmyam evatat. So na tyajyam, these activities, jnana, uh, yagya dana tapa karma, these activities, these four things, FSAC, na tyajyam, you should not give up. So keep doing them. That's point number one. Why you should keep doing them? And in second verse, 18.6, Lord Krishna will say, in what mood you should do? With what consciousness? It is pretty obvious. The consciousness will be with no attachment to the results. Why you should do it in such a way? He says in the next line, because it, it is purifying. To the or purifying, we can say, or I'll just make the grammar different because it purifies the mind, mind or heart. Okay. It cleanses the mind or heart. So um, they must be performed. Indeed, sacrifice, charity, and pen penance purify even the great souls. The Sanskrit there is Pavana Manishinam. So it is very pavan. Pavan means it purifies manishinam and even great souls. Manishinam means the rishis, the great sages. Even they perform these activities because it continues to purify their mind. It continues to purify their activities, their heart. So that is point number one. And this is in 18.5. Point number two, 18.6. What does 18.6 say? All these activities should be performed without attachment or any expectation of result. They should be performed as a matter of duty, O son of Pritha. That is my final opinion. Okay. So he says, Nishchitam matam uttamam. This is my Nishchitam matam, my definite opinion. In other words, you can say it is the definition. Uttamam, topmost definition. So that is the topmost definition of Tyaga and Sannyasa. So what is the second point? And you will see here, Karmani Sangha Tyaktva Phalani Cha. So Tyaktva word applies to both Sangha and Phala. Kindly mute yourself. There is some noise. Please keep yourself muted. Don't think your mic will not catch the sound. I'm very quiet. Better to just, you know, technically mute it even though you may be in a quiet room, it still catches some noise. So, Lord Krishna says, etani api tu karmani sangam tyaktva phalani cha. So, what you should give up without attachment to the work or to the fruit of the work. So without attachment to duty or without attachment to the fruit of duty, just keep doing it um, as a matter of duty. And that is kartavya uh, niti me partha. So as a kartavya, as a matter of duty, because it needs to be done, kartavya, as a matter of duty. So if you compare what I have written here, let me underline it in red color. Keep doing this without attachment to the work or the fruit of work or a matter of duty. Keep doing this. This is exactly the same as what I had put in the big red box above, which is do your duty. That was 18.5, okay? And these three points are in 18.6. Are you following? So if I were to draw it like this, this one is 18.5. And these three items are 18.6. You following? Again, concept is very simple. Lord Krishna is explaining it in 
great detail and he's also telling if somebody else tells you to give up all activities don't listen to them or if somebody says keep doing the activity of daan like charity etc but with the expectation of result oh i will go to swarg if i go to daan don't listen to them as well both are incorrect you should continue to do the activities ultimately which uh, forward or support your spiritual goals everything else you should stop so that is i hope you have understood the essence of what lord krishna is trying to say so that is 18.5 and 18.6 okay let me see yeah so 18.5 and 18.6 are lord krishna's definition of tyaga and sanyas now lord krishna will say three more things 18.7 18.8 18.9 okay whether it is tyag or sanyas i will write it tyag sanyas both t s in mode of ignorance in mode of passion in mode of goodness sattva rajas and tamas okay so renunciation that's what shila prabhupad translates it as tyaga sanyasa whatever it may be word is again not important the definition is important what is it in tamas in tamas what is renunciation that one gives up oops your activity due to illusion okay so why i have to do anything or somebody came and told me oh this is wrong that is wrong some you listened to some unauthorized person any such kind of reasoning that you do or you give why not to do the activity at all or why to abandon doing anything that is renunciation in the mode of ignorance now in mode of passion you know that yes you should do your activity but you give it up because of two reasons one possible reason is that it is difficult to do difficult or uncomfortable so activity is difficult or uncomfortable lord krishna says sharira klesha because it causes klesha to the sharir anything that you as a matter of duty if you have to do it is hard like you know for a mother raising a child is not easy but that is the duty of a mother or a father you have to raise the child you know you have to take you know take care of the child this so much hard work any parent will say that it is it is you know but it needs to be done and even more if you are raising the child in a spiritual manner it is even more nice so if but if some people may just give it up and you know there are some rich people who will hire a nanny give the child to nanny okay at least they are paying the nanny some people completely neglect that they may be in tamas but they will say oh, i don't want to take the botheration i will let somebody else do it whatever may be the case anyway difficult or uncomfortable and the second thing is if it brings unhappiness unhappiness means it conflicts with our other goals some mother may say oh i cannot go to kitty party because i have to take my child to the you know school or i have to drive the child to some you know birthday party for the child's you know growth for his happiness or whatever i want to go there so i you know i don't want to undergo some unhappiness or some kind of you know um whatever so you give it up that is in the mode of passion for some other result for your own benefit you prioritize your own benefit over doing your duty some other fruit that you cherish more that is sweeter you should try to enjoy that over doing your duty in sattva 18.9 lord krishna says again the exact same thing 
you can just say it is equal to 18.5 plus 18.6. That is sattva, which is equal to 18.2. So basically 18.9 is equal to 18.5 plus 18.6, which is equal to 18.2. Just remember this, that the essence of all these verses is the same. What is the essence once again? Do your duty, point number one. And then how, in what consciousness or in what mood? One, two, three, without attachment to fruit, to duty itself, and as a kartavya, as a matter of duty, sorry. Kartavya. Okay, which is exactly what is said in 18.5 and 18.6 and 18.9 as well. Okay, that is 18.9 right here. So this is renunciation. So you are basically renouncing, doing the duty. You are doing the duty, but that is also renunciation. How it is renunciation? It is internal renunciation because we are saying here without. So there is something without, you don't have something. That is the renunci renunciation part. And what are you renouncing? The fruits, the attachment to the duty, trying to do something else which you are attached to, but it is not your duty. Like a parent's duty is to help the child. The child needs you know, help with the homework. Child says, I'm not able to do this problem in math or whatever this homework. Parent is saying, no, I'm watching a movie right now. I cannot help you. So the parent is not doing the duty. The parent's duty or the person's duty is not to watch a binge on Netflix. There is no, I, I cannot imagine unless you are trying to become an actor or I don't know, I don't want to come up with all weird scenarios, how Netflix binging could be a duty. So let's not go there. But if you are neglecting your duty or you have a job to do, you have to, you know, finish some work. You have to, you know, uh, write a report as part of your job and you are binging Netflix and then next morning your report is due and you have not done it and then you know your boss fires you. So that's not good either. So one has to do your duty versus uh, you're giving up something else and that is why it is renunciation or tyana. Okay, so let us read the translations of 18.7, 8 and 9. So 18.7 says, Prescribed duties should never be renounced. If one gives up his prescribed duty because of illusion, so it says mohat tasya parityagas. Moha. Moha means illusion. Because of illusion, such renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance, MOI. Next, eighth. Anyone who gives up prescribed duties as troublesome. Troublesome means what? Dukkham iti. So that is the troublesome or unhappiness. Dukkha. Or out of fear of bodily discomfort. That is difficult or uncomfortable. The Sanskrit that is used is um, Kaya Klesha. What did I say? Shariram Klesham. So okay, Kaya. Sorry, the word was Kaya. Kaya means also Sharira. So Kaya Klesham Bhayat Yajet out of fear of bodily discomfort is said to have renounced in the mode of passion. Such action never leads to the elevation of renunciation. And that is mode of passion. And 18.9, oh Arjun, when one performs his prescribed duty only because it ought to be done, that is Kartavya, and renounces all material association and attachment to fruit, so material association means you are not attached to the duty or the fruit without attachment to fruit. Then the renunciation is supposed to be in the mode of goodness. So the first line is when one performs the prescribed duty, that is this part. So do your duty 
without attachment to fruit, without attachment to duty itself, and as a matter of duty. That is in the mode of goodness. And Lord Krishna says that is the real sannyasa or tyag. Okay. So then in 18 point. 10, Lord Krishna says, the intelligent renouncer is situated in the mode of goodness, neither hateful of inauspicious work nor attached to auspicious work, has no doubts about work. So basically what 18.10 is talking about is a medhavi tyagi. Medhavi means intelligent. Tyagi means renouncer. Okay, so the point being made here, Lord Krishna is saying a Medhavi Tyagi acts as per 18.9 or 18.5, 18.6 or 18.2. I will use this terminology often just to show the connection between the various verses. They all mean the same thing. There are very, very subtle differences. Lord Krishna never repeats himself. So it's not like he's repeating himself. But for our purposes at a high level, we are saying all of these three verses or four verses, 18.2, 18.5 and 6 and 18.9 mean the same thing. So one who acts as per these verses is a Medhavi Tyagi. And in 18.11, Lord Krishna says, why? Because... It is impossible to give up action. So let's read 18.10. Oh, we already read it. 18.11. It is indeed impossible for an embodied being to give up all activities. So you cannot give up all activities. At least you have to do some activity, even to survive, even to live. You have to eat, you have to breathe, you have to sleep, you have to do those things. Basic, very basic things you have to do. Unless you go into Samadhi inside a cave like, uh, you know, Hiranyakashyapu and the ants ate up his body, only the skeleton was left. So you have to do, you know, that level of stopping all activity or as Dhruva, you know, when he was meditating on Lord Vishnu. So everything he stopped, he went into the state of Samadhi and that is when Lord Vishnu appeared. But he was chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So that's why Lord Vishnu appeared and uh, Hiranyakashipu was chanting Lord Brahma's mantra. So Brahmaji appeared. Okay. But the difference was Hiranyakashipu asked for something material from Brahmaji. And even though Dhruva wanted to ask something material, simply by seeing Lord Vishnu, his whole consciousness was spiritualized. And he only asked for Lord Vishnu's mercy or his kripa or his bhakti. He said, I don't want anything. I came here for something material. Now that is all gone. So that is the difference between meditating on Lord Vishnu versus someone else. But anyway, so one has to do some activity, 18.11. It is indeed impossible for an embodied being to give up all activities. But he who renounces the fruits of action is called one who has truly renounced. So again, we can add uh, 18.11 also in this definition that give up the, you must renounce the fruits of action. And that is known as sa tyagi iti abhidiyate. So in 18.11, the word that is being used is tyagi. In 18.12, Lord Krishna will use the word sannyasi. What is 18.12? He will say that one who is not renounced, for one who is not renounced, there are three kinds of results. So, and he will, Lord Krishna will say, such a person is not a sannyasi, one who wants some result. Okay. So there are three types of results. What are the three types of results? Good, bad, or we can say sinful, and this is pious. And there is a middle category called mixed. 
Mishra. So, uh, Anishtam, Ishtam, Mishram, Cha, and mixed. So, somewhere in the middle. So, you basically, you can think of this as Su Karma and Vi Karma, which we had read in chapter 4. Vi Karma, Su Karma, and then something mixed, mixture of the two. But, what is the Recommended type of karma, what it is called, anybody can say. There is a third category. One is sukarma. Mishkam, mishkam, mishkam karma. karma. A karma, a karma, a karma. A karma, very nice. It is given in chapter 4, verse number 17. That is called a karma. So, what Lord Krishna is saying that. But those who are renounced in the renounced order of life have no such result to suffer or enjoy. So those who are doing it with a nishkama mood, without any attachment to the fruit or the duty, uh, and just as a matter of duty they are doing it, they are performing a karma. So that is what is being said in 18.12. And that is known as... Um, um, such people are known as sannyasis. So those who are performing this akarma are called sannyasis. So sannyasi and tyagi, same thing. It all depends on the definition. So that is the end of this section. So any questions? So we spent a lot of time, but I will just again focus back on this. This is a nice page. Lord Krishna's definition of tyag or sannyas. Keep doing these activities but without attachment to the fruits or to the activity itself. Okay, so that is the essence of these 12 verses. Okay, so let's move on. So today I have to leave at 7.30. Uh, so we will discuss for 15 more minutes and we will cover the next section, which is 18.13 to 18.17, five verses, okay? So, now, Lord Krishna says in 18.13, what? causes action or I will say what causes successful action. Or we can say what are the causes of successful action. So Again, this is a quick revision of everything that was studied from chapter 2 to chapter 5. It is basically a revision. In chapter 3 and chapter 4, Lord Krishna said that you are not the only cause. There are other causes of the success for action. So like we say, a farmer... He may do all his action perfectly. Is it guaranteed that he will get a good crop? What could go wrong? No rains. It may not rain. Storm or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Or even if there is rain, maybe, you know, uh, the soil is not good and it doesn't produce. He bought a piece of land to grow something. So first time he's trying to grow some crop, but the land is not fertile. He purchased some land. I, by testing the land, it may not be possible to know whether it has enough minerals, whatever. Or maybe, you know, some animals come in the night and eat the crop or whatever may happen. There are so many things that can go wrong. Okay, the seeds may not be very um, of good quality that they produce the crop. So many things could go wrong. So. Uh, he may do everything perfectly, but, and the other thing is that, anyway, so Lord Krishna says there are five causes. So what are the causes? 
five causes four of successful action and out of these five causes there are four that are material and one that is spiritual and of course the spiritual cause is krishna or paramatma in this particular case it is no lord krishna calls it the super soul and there are four material causes which we will see so there are five causes for successful uh, action or the successful accomplishment of action successful we can say accomplishment of action or of the result so let us look at number 13 okay so even in the mode of goodness you may do all the activity as a matter of duty everything you may do the result is still not guaranteed even if you are doing it in the mode of goodness because of these five factors so o oh mighty armed arjuna according to the vedanta there are five causes for the accomplishment of all action now learn of these from me okay so there are five causes of action what are the five causes now they are given in 18.14 the five causes or five factors of a uh, successful action okay i'll change it to blue color 1 2 3 4 and 5 so what are these the place of action which is the body that is known as adhisthanam so the body the tatha karta so the performer then the karanam karanam means the various instruments or the senses the senses are knowledge acquiring and action performing they are known as the gyanendriya and karmendriya so the senses of our body and then cha prithag vidham vividhas chascha prithag cheshta so cheshta is the next one which is our endeavor our effort that we put in cheshta and ultimately the super soul paramatma so these are the five factors of action now four factors these first four are material and the fifth one is spiritual okay so when we say here body it means our personal body and the surrounding environment body plus environment the performer primarily is our ahankara our ego i want to do this if i do this i will get this that whole thing that drives that factor which drives the senses to do certain action then from the senses you do the action itself through the senses the effort the endeavor that you put in the cheshta all the hard work that you put in that is the endeavor so these are the four factors of action that are you can say to some extent it is within our control now within that also there may not be things within our control like we just took the case of a farmer the rain may not come so it is not technically within our control because of whatever reason the rain doesn't come now ultimately the topmost reason is the super soul now because the super soul did not want success he can cause the rain to not come he can cause so many things to fail so ultimately he is the biggest cause in our success or failure but it doesn't mean that we don't have a role to play we also have a role to play and we do our best but 
we also depend on the super soul. Okay. So in the purport of this verse, Srila Prabhupada has described nicely. I'll just read the last word, the last few lines in the purport of 18.14. Srila Prabhupada writes that, but all one's activities depend on the will of the super soul who is seated within the heart as a friend. Let me open it up here. Mm. Safari. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, verse number 14. So in the purport, the last few lines. Yeah, I'll read from here. This one. But all one's activities depend on the will of the super soul who is seated within the heart as a friend. The Supreme Lord is the super cause. Super cause means he's the topmost cause. That cause can override the remaining four. Under these circumstances, he who is acting in Krishna consciousness under the direction of the super soul situated within the heart is naturally not bound by any activity. Those in complete Krishna consciousness are not ultimately responsible for their actions. Everything is dependent on the supreme will and the super soul, the supreme personality of God. So they don't. This is the most important line. they are not ultimately responsible for their actions. So those who consider the Supreme Soul or Paramatma or Krishna to be the ultimate cause, whether they get success or failure, they will still put in their hard work with full commitment, but they take the success or failure as success itself because ultimately I do, I do my best, but if the Lord didn't want it to happen, whatever happens is what the Lord's plan. And so there... For a devotee, what does a devotee do? Does his best and accepts whatever result that comes. Why? Because Devotee knows that Krishna's plan is much better than my plan. And whatever result comes, comes out of Krishna's plan. So one should just continue to be a devotee and do your activity, do your best and accept whatever result that comes. Because Krishna's plan is better than my plan, is much, much better than my plan. So with that mood, one continues to do the activity. And this mood makes the devotee do that activity with complete detachment. He's not attached to any fruit or any result. Whatever result comes, he knows that Lord Krishna will make such a result happen, it is best for me which is best for me. So why am I attached to any particular result? Whatever happens is in my best interest. So therefore, there is no attachment to the result. There is no attachment to the work itself. One, but still one does the work as a matter of duty to support his spiritual life. So that was very important verse where Lord Krishna is giving the five factors of successful action. 18.15 Whatever right or wrong action a man performs by body, mind or speech is caused by these five factors. So basically all result of action or all fruit you can say is produced due to these five factors. So whatever is produced, it is because of these five factors and within them, which is the most important one? Paramatma. That is the most important factor. And especially for a devotee, that is a very important factor because the Paramatma will make sure whatever happens is in the best interest of a devotee. For others, 
it will be as per the law of karma whatever you deserve okay so that is 18.15 18.16 therefore one who thinks himself on the only doer not considering these five factors is not very intelligent and cannot see things as they are so therefore 18.16 do not consider yourself as the only doer you are not the only doer and here is where shila prabhupad points out that there are four material causes and one spiritual cause if you see here in 18.16 Lord Krishna says here, although the material causes are the place, the worker. So I said, you know, place, not just the body, the place, the environment, the entire environment, the worker, which means the ahankar, basically the driving factor, the endeavor, is his cheshta and the senses. Senses means the gyanendriya and karmendriyas, five and five. right you all know the grand gyanendriyas and karmendriyas what are the gyanendriyas who can tell quickly very quick ears hear hearing, hearing vision vision taste taste feeling sparsha skin yes in, and no smell and the nose smell very nice so they are the gyanendriya what are the karmendriyas that represents ears nose no 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 tongues no 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 no, no, no. karmendriyas are hands and oh the hands the legs the legs body the um stomach, stomach and the two output organs okay the uh, where from where you the two excretory organs so they are the five karmendriyas from where you perform action so and the senses and the final cause is the supreme the personality of godhead now this is the line therefore one should see not only the four material causes prabhupada is writing there are four material causes but the supreme efficient cause as well which is parmatma or the spiritual cause one who does not see the supreme and thinks uh one who does not see the supreme thinks himself to be the doer so one who uh, neglects the parmatma thinks he is the doer even then he is not the doer because there are certain things that are not within his control for example the place very simple example is that you know there is a farmer but the place where he is sowing the seed is barren it's barren land it does not have any um minerals it doesn't have water it doesn't have so many things it's directly related to the place so there are so many other things but again ultimately it is due to parmatma that he caused you to have such a land which is barren so ultimately for the devotee it is for the devotee's benefit but for others you know, for those who are not dedicated to bhagwan it is a law of karma he must have done something wrong in the past and therefore it is coming back to him okay so that is the end of this section or okay there's one more verse 16th 17th which is one who is not motivated by false ego whose intelligence is not entangled though he kills men in this world does not kill nor is he bound by his actions so this is the last statement by lord krishna where he is saying that you must do your duty without attachment and know that there are five causes you may be doing a duty of killing but ultimately if you are doing it with the right consciousness the success will still be there even though the action itself is not it doesn't appear to be good in the farmer's case the action was good the success may not be there but if you do it in the proper mood in the proper consciousness in krishna consciousness the externally the action may not be good which is the opposite of farmer maybe he didn't sow the seeds maybe the land was declared to be barren 
you may think what a foolish farmer he is he is not doing his duty at all he is neglecting or he is doing bad duty even then the crop could come up the success can be there even if externally the action looks completely fruitless you are following in like in case of arjuna ultimately he will be killing people which is not a good thing but because krishna is with him because he is doing it with the right consciousness to please krishna the result will be completely perfect all right so that is the last verse so that is 18.17 18.17 says that externally the action may be good looking or bad looking but success can still be there because of parmatma because of super soul okay all right so we will stop here it is 7:30 let's take some questions if you have questions uh so let's see there are some questions on the chat why does super soul super soul parmatma let the heinous crime like rape happen okay let's talk about that definitely it's a good question thank you prabhu ji got my answer from today's class i shall continue to absorb as much as i can I have to leave the rest to the lord yes medha mata ji your consciousness is perfectly correct i know in what context you are talking so uh, yes but ultimately you know i just to explain the context mata ji was just little you know thinking about something uh, going on and i told her that you know externally you may feel that i am not getting success it is because you think that you are this is let's talk about this verse my plan is better than krishna's plan or whatever oops okay you are putting in lot of effort but the result is not coming okay and you are blaming yourself i am not good enough i am not good i didn't do it let's say farmer he is putting in lot of he is a devotee he sows the seed he got a nice piece of land everything he did nicely but rain didn't happen and his crop failed let us say his crop failed okay but internally in his heart the devotee is happy that is the success now at a material level it may there are so many stories of miracles maybe you know somebody will come and you know give him lot of money or something else very nice will happen in his life or whatever may be there or even if nothing externally nice happens in his heart he is completely satisfied because he knows that my bhakti that i am doing is going nicely whether the crop happens or not is up to the lord completely up to the lord okay there is this very very nice verse which i am applying or trying to you know constantly remember at all the times very very nice verse i think i shared earlier also it is called alabdhe va vinashte va uh, bhaksha achhadan sadhane aviklav matir bhutva um harim eva dhiya smaret it is given in uh, i forget uh, let me search it up and show you you must remember this it's a very very beautiful verse alabdhe va vinashte va hmm? yeah 11249 purport it is given here alabdhe va vinashte va bhaksha achhadan sadhane अविक्लव मतिर्भूत्वा हरिम एव धिय स्मरेत प्लीज राइट इट डाउन इन बिग लेटर्स पुट इट इन योर रूम रिमेंबर इट एवरी डे 
what it means is that alabdhe va vinashte va we are trying for various things bhakshya achadana sadhane we are trying for whatever we try for things bhakshya means to eat achadan means to cover yourself so roti kapda makan whatever you can say we try for these things but sometimes we don't get it alabdhe va we don't get it or vinashte va we may have it and it got lost whatever things in life happen happen like farmer sowed the seed crop happens or not happens doesn't matter aviklava matir bhutva his mind mati is completely absorbed aviklava which means undeviated focused his mind on what harim eva dhiya smarit always with his mind focused mind he is remembering smarat smaran of who of hari and that gives him full success full happiness his definition of success is is my mind in hari or is my mind in bhakshya achadana aaj roti mila ki nahi kapda mila ki nahi today did i get all my sadhana for living that is not his mati his smaran is not in that his mati is not in that his smaran and his mati is aviklava focused on hari that is the happiness definition of happiness for a bhakt very important verse very beautiful please remember this and that this verse is no different from saying this line this line and this verse are one and the same that krishna's plan is better than my plan all right are you all following thank you prabhu ji yes thank you prabhu ji theek hai okay why does super soul or parmatma let the heinous crime like rape happen so yes it is very heinous and on the face of it it looks extremely heinous but even murder or so many other things are equally heinous so i will not pick on rape i mean whatever happened in the second world war in concentration camps was uh, no no good or no uh, n- not much better you know you cannot say that oh that was uh, more humane so all these things happen to people uh you know people are uh, tortured and killed by demons um in various ways in various ways it happens and it is couple of things it goes back to law of karma so why it happens because of two possibilities at the root level one is you are the ultimate cause maybe in the previous life or whatever you have done such things so it is coming back somebody else is being and you did it against that person against that person now he is getting a chance to he is getting a um um uh, nature or yamaraj or you know whoever is controller of the material world is uh, mother durga etc she is known as uh, you know the maya shakti is creating opportunity for the other person to get even with the vic- so called victim right now so has created this opportunity and then if the demoniac person his conditioning is to go through with it he will take that opportunity and uh, you know execute that crime and the cycle of karma continues or because the second reason could be it could be that this demoniac person is so demoniac he gets pleasure out of doing a such a heinous crime and he has some pious credits from the past because of his pious credits he desires to do some heinous crime and the lord sanctions it because he has pious credits so sometimes and typically you will see you know when you get rich or when you get power then you get more capacity to do crimes how did hitler do so many crimes against so many people because he was materially he was powerful but again you know there must have been spirit not spiritual karmic uh, pious credits with him which he misused and then the parmatma sanctions that you know it's like uh, you gave your child 100 dollars because he did some good work he completed all the homework he came first in the class in his test 
Father says, my dear child, you have done very nice thing. Here is $100 pocket money. Now with that $100, the child can go and eat some ice cream or he can go and take some drugs. The $100 has been given to him. He can do whatever he wants. If the father is like, you know, he's sanctioning. Okay, here is $100, do whatever you want. He can either misuse it, but he can only buy the drugs or the ice cream up to $100, not more. If he has done a lot of good work, father may give him $1,000, then he can do more drugs or more ice cream or whatever. That depends on his conditioning. So like that Hiranyakashyapa, for example, did so much pious credit by doing this tapasya for 10,000 years, he did tapasya of Brahmaji. He gained so much pious credit because of which he could do so much crime. And when that was used up, the Lord came and finished. But his biggest crime was he offended the greatest devotee of the Lord. So now that is goes in a completely different category. But till then, before he offended the devotee, he committed crime against devotee, which is Prahlad. Lord was sanctioning it. Okay, your pious karma is still there. I have given you $1,000. You can keep taking the drugs. Once your dollars are over, then you will suffer. So I hope that answers the question that these people who are doing the crime may have past pious credits, which they choose to misuse, like you have pocket money and you choose to eat drugs instead of chocolate or ice cream. That is one answer. That's complete misuse. And then the cycle of karma starts. Next life, they will get a chance to do the same thing or worse. And the second is, you do this because Maya, Devi, or you know the material nature, Prakriti is arranging it for you to get even. But if you don't take that opportunity, you give it up, you let go, you forgive, then you get back the pious credits, which you can properly use next time because you did not choose to use it in the sinful way. Otherwise, the sinful cycle continues. I will rape you. Next life, you rape me. And then I will kill you, you kill me, I kill you. The cycle keeps going, keeps going. And Prakriti will keep arranging the situation such that it will keep happening. In Second World War, in the concentration camps, we see so many examples where these soldiers used to take pleasure in killing the people. And some of them would not take pleasure and they would do a little bit of resistance, which means they did not enjoy Lord Krishna or Yamaraj can see whether you are doing it with pleasure or you are doing it by force. Those soldiers, German soldiers who did it with pleasure, they are misusing that. Um, they are being given, both are being given an opportunity. One is disgusted and one is very pleased. The one who is pleased will have to suffer in the next life. One who is disgusted but still has to do now, some may say, I will not do. Of course, the boss will shoot him then, then and there. Oh, you're not following orders? You're dead. Okay, then at least you didn't do it. That's even better. But even if we're doing it with disgust, complete disgust in your heart is better than doing it with a sense of enjoyment. But so many soldiers did it with a sense of enjoyment. Many of them. Even though externally they would say, oh, this is bad. So many said, uh, um, in the Nuremberg trials and later on, a lot of trials happened for the low-level soldiers. If you read the history, the boss would say, shoot him, shoot this person. Again, sorry, I'm making it very drastic. Some would shoot in a way that the person immediately dies painlessly or whatever, as soon as possible. Some would shoot at a way that the person does not die immediately. He suffers and dies. They are getting the pleasure out of it. Very, very sinful. I hope you get the point. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, so it's all about, Mataji is saying, all about using the free will in the right way. The free will and the opportunity that has been given to you by Prakriti. When again, it is free will to use that opportunity. You may be in the right place, like you had a gun, 
the guy is standing in front of you his hands are tied the opportunity is perfect for you to shoot with no fear he cannot do anything so the opportunity is there right in front of you it has been arranged because in past life it may have been the reverse okay sorry for the very deep uh, and uh, disturbing discussion but it is uh, yeah yes suri prabhu you have question hand up i cannot hear you can somebody say something um, because of your detailed discussion um, my question was answered automatically all right okay great thank you mataji and plus we can't hear him also okay yeah and my speaker is working because i yeah. heard indra yeah. mata ji yeah. suri prabhu we cannot hear you you cannot uh, type it anything yeah. else so prabhu ji suri prabhu we will take your question next week okay so we will continue from uh, on 18th chapter from 18.18 so we have done till 18.17 today and that starts the next section where lord krishna gives remember in verse 1 lord krishna described uh, uh, sorry arjun asked tell me from various angles this whole difference between sanyas and tyag so sanyas and tyag have been described right now uh, definition wise now lord krishna will say what motivates somebody to do one type of action versus another so the various factors of doing the action what we discussed in these last five verses was the factors of success of action what causes the success now what causes one the motivation for the action from where the motivation comes to do one thing versus another so we will see all of that in the next class thank you so much Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna.